Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We've got another food packed video in the Backyard Grilling series. So far I have two other videos and if you've missed those I'll leave links to them in the description. For today I purchased $25 worth of food from my local grocery store. Let's get right into this and see what we've got to work with. And here are the items that I picked up for today's $25 grilling challenge. And this is for my local grocery store. First of all, I picked up this package of pre-seasoned pork ribeye chops. I figure that way there's already seasoning on there and it's a little different from what I normally do. So we get different flavors. And then I got a bag of green beans and then I got a red onion, some red potatoes and some russet potatoes, a package of rosemary, a package of mozzarella cheese, some butter, one ounce of sunflower seeds from their bulk section, a package of four bolillo rolls, and then we have a cantaloupe and three bananas, a garden salad blend mix, one tomato and one cucumber. The tomato and cucumber are very large. <laughs> All right, so first things first, this is actually frozen and I'm thawing it out. So first things first, I'm letting that thaw out. But we need to get, even if you do this a day before, which is probably ideal, we need to get the bananas and the cantaloupe in the freezer. That will be our dessert and it needs to be frozen. I'm going to be perfectly transparent with you guys. I already have three frozen bananas. So I'm going to be using those because I need to get rid of those first. But I do still need to freeze the cantaloupe. So I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna slice it very thin. If you do it the night before, you don't need to slice it as thin as I'm gonna These be slicing These are the pantry items to use today. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, and oil. Honestly, if you don't want to use the oil, you can just use butter when I say oil because there's there there should be enough butter for that. All right, so the t my total for all of this was $25.35. So I did go over my budget by 35 cents, which I could eliminate by not having the sunflower seeds, <laughs> but I would like to go ahead and spend that extra 35 cents to have a little crunch on our salad. Another thing I want to mention is that there was uh, quite a bit that was on sale this week and I did get lower prices on things than I would normally get. The green beans were on sale. The cantaloupe was very much on sale. Uh, and the tomatoes were on sale. Oh, and the meat was on sale. I highly encourage you to shop sale prices. That was what determined what we would be eating for this grill meal. And also remember, if you don't already have three frozen bananas in your freezer like I do, then go ahead and peel and slice these and put them on that sheet to freeze with the cantaloupe. We are going to be giving our green beans a wash, a rinse, I should say. And then we're gonna snip off the ends. I'm going to be using our grilling pan, the one that is super beat up <laughs> and that we really charred on Dollar Tree grilling day. And I'll put the green beans straight onto there after I have cut the ends off of them. Next, we're going to cut up the red onion to go on top of, or to be cooked with the green beans. I'm going to save these onions for the salad because I think there's plenty on here. Now we need to add some oil and some salt and pepper and also some of our rosemary to this. Just 
adding a little bit of salt and pepper. I highly recommend that you keep the oil handy while you are grilling this, while you have this on the grill, just in case it, that one tablespoon wasn't enough to get it to not stick. I always have trouble opening pepper. All right, so there's some pepper. You're also gonna put about three, three tablespoons worth of butter onto this. You can melt it if you want. I am not going to melt it. I'm just going to put it on top because in real time here, I still have a little bit of time before this goes outside. Time to prepare our salad. I have rinsed the tomato. First, I'm going to put this in. It does say ready to enjoy, thoroughly washed. So I'm going to go ahead and take them for their word. I'm not sure that I like the arrangement. I think I might just toss it. Not like throw it out. I mean like toss the salad. Go ahead and get two slices of mozzarella cheese out. And we're gonna chop them into pieces. This will be part of the salad toppings. Here's our salad. I'm going to go ahead and salt and pepper it for now. And as it gets closer to dinner, I will toss in the cheese and the sunflower seeds, and then the onions will be on the side. Next, I'm gonna peel and slice these potatoes. Now I'm going to slice them into thin rounds, like so. Can you see? Yeah, you can see. I have to look behind the camera to see if you could see. All right, so this is all the red ones. I'm gonna keep them separated because I don't have any heavy duty foil, so I absolutely have to divide this up. Um, in fact, if even if you have heavy duty, I would say divide it up or it's gonna take way too long on the grill. We have our potatoes, and in these potatoes, we are going to be adding one tablespoon of oil. So now, some salt, some pepper, garlic powder, however much you want. The main flavors in this will be garlic and rosemary. If you don't like rosemary, don't use rosemary. So now I have this foil and I'm just going to carefully put the potatoes on there. So here's the two tablespoons of butter. As I've said in this series before, I am by no means a grill expert, but I do know that these potatoes are gonna take longer than anything else that we are grilling today. They ended up taking about an hour and a half. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the russets and we're gonna repeat that whole process with them as well. Here we have our russets. Um, I do want to let you guys know that I don't think I put enough seasoning on the first ones, the red ones. So I'm going to open that packet back up and add some more salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Here 
here we have all of our items to be grilled all together. We have our pork ribeye pre-seasoned, our pat potato packets, and then our sheet pan with the green beans. Whoops, <laughs> my tripod's going wonky. The green beans with the red onions and the rosemary. I, um, my husband has requested that I please put that in a foil packet as well. He thinks that would work better than trying to grill on this pan again. <laughs> so I'm going to get that done. Here it is, but I'm also going to cover the top of it. But I wanted to show you guys because it looks so cute in its little foil bow. Now I'm going to be making the cheesy mozzarella bread. First I'm going to slice open all these rolls and put them on a foiled baking sheet. And buttering them. So here we have all of our toast, all of, all of our bolillos buttered. If you don't have bolillos, just any kind of, of these rolls will work, even the Italian loaf. I actually could not get that on, um, on curbside, so that's why I had to go this route. If you go with the, if you get the, this is garlic powder, if you get the Italian loaf, that would save you money too, because those are like a dollar and not a dollar sixty-eight. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of pepper on it. And now we're going to put the mozzarella cheese on it. I am going to be leaving two of these blank in case somebody doesn't want the mozzarella cheese. I picked two of the fluffiest ones to leave blank. <laughs> blank. That's such a funny term because I'm still putting garlic on it. I think I'm going to slice them so they don't run over too, too much. There we go. So now this is obviously not ready to get broiled at this point, but I'm going to wrap it with some plastic wrap and set it aside until we are done outside. I'm actually putting it in the fridge, not setting it aside because of the cheese. And here my husband is loading the potatoes onto the grill. Inside the grill. I knew that. Okay, he has fire resistant gloves on. So only do that if you have fire resistant gloves or heat, heat resistant gloves. Here comes the second packet of potatoes. Again, only do this if you have these gloves. Otherwise just use tongs. So the potatoes direct on the heat because they're going to take a while and then the green bean and onion packet on top. Closing it up and we're just sliding it in so that the coals get hot. That's all, just like that. The total time for everything was as follows. The potatoes took about an hour and a half. The green beans took an hour and the meat was done pretty quick. I would say probably about 10-15 minutes. My husband said he's going to finish up outside and I can go ahead and finish up in here. So we need to get this mozzarella bread into the oven under the broiler. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get this oven heated to broil and then we'll get the rest of the salad put together as well. Those look good. I don't have my mic on, so I'm going to speak a little bit loudly. So we're going to fancify this salad up a little bit. I don't know if I've told you all, but I think I did. I salted, peppered the salad. And now we're going to add the sunflower seeds. And then we have the mozzarella cheese. And we're just going to toss that on top. 
We also have the rest of the red onions over there. I have them soaking in some cold water to take a little bit of the bite out of the onion flavor. All right, I am not gonna put the onions directly on. I'm just gonna serve the onions on the side, but there's the salad. Here's our final product of the dinner. I don't have the dessert made yet. We'll have to do that later. So here we have the pork and then the two potatoes and the green beans, the salad with the rest of the, well, the salad with the onions that I didn't want to put directly on it. And then the broiled bread with the mozzarella on most of it. And then a couple of them left blank. Here are my frozen items. To give a time perspective, I sliced that cantaloupe about four hours ago and it's solid frozen. So you don't have to do it overnight. You can do it the same day, but give yourself four hours, as long as you slice them the same as I did. If they're thicker, they'll take longer. And obviously my bananas were already frozen. So if you are going to plan on having the bananas freeze within four and a half hours, you'll want to slice them about the same size as the cantaloupe. What I'm going to be doing now is putting this into blender to make a nice creamy dessert. Also, I have a very average blender. I don't have anything like a Vitamix or anything like that. So this is just a regular blender that I'm using to make this. pretty thick. I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of water. We'll see how that goes. All right, just a quick break to give you a recap of what I've done. I've put in half the bananas and a good portion of the cantaloupe, but not half. I would say maybe a third of the cantaloupe and about half a cup of water. So I had to do this in two rounds. It was just too much for my blender to do all at once. Uh, when all was said and done, I used all three frozen bananas and about two thirds of the frozen cantaloupe. Also, I added in about a total of one cup of water between the two batches. This is a very natural dessert. Um, I haven't added any sugars, so I'm going to go ahead and serve it with the sugar shaker on the side in case anyone needs any sugar in it. The pre-seasoned pork was super flavorful. I guess they know what they're doing when they season it in the store. The potatoes were good as they were, but the next day I pan fried the leftovers with some of the red onion and they were even better. That mozzarella bread, yum. The green beans were very infused with the onion and rosemary flavor after being on the grill for an hour. The salad was good too. So my husband and I both thought the dessert was very refreshing. The kids were like, um, it tastes like frozen fruit. Well, yes, that's exactly what it was. Thanks so much for sticking with me until the end. Y'all are great. See you again soon.